Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, and I'm taking a bit of a break from the Sussex border walk at the moment because it's wet and miserable outside. And besides, I've had a parcel arrive for me, and I'm very excited. Uh, now, I know what's inside the parcel because my friend Andrew Norris, who lives in Croatia, has been making something for a future project. We've been reading on my live shows, which is now on a separate YouTube channel, um, books, and the channel's called Listen With Vobes, which is a, a jolly old name. But we've been reading a number of old books, books that uh, take you around the country, old travel books from the 1900s to about the 1930s. We've had authors such as J.B. Priestley, H.V. Morton, and others. One, Walter Wilkinson, who I've made some separate videos about, which you may have seen. He wrote a book called The Sussex Peep Show, in which he and uh, either his wife or a friend, who he called The Utility, travelled around Sussex with a Punch and Judy show, but a much more refined Punch and, punch and Judy show than you would remember from the seaside uh, or events at uh, gala shows or family fun shows, that sort of thing. Um, and he was doing this in the 1920s and 30s. In fact, he wrote a series of books and I've got them, some of them here. I've been collecting them. There is a couple more to get. Um, Vagabonds and Puppets is, is one. The original book that he started when he went into Devon, um, The Peep Show. Uh, he calls these puppet shows, peep shows, interestingly. Uh, Puppets Through Lancashire is another one, and there's one where he goes through Yorkshire, I think it is. Beautifully written. He was an, an amazing author. Uh, he really knew how to describe the scenery and the places he went to. And talking of that, in Sussex, he decided not to go to the provincial towns and to the large conurbations, but he kept himself to the rural villages and stayed overnight in tents, uh, in a little tent. He put the whole thing together on a tiny little barrow and, and meandered across the countryside on the byways and back lanes. Absolutely amazing. I'll link to some of the videos that I've done, as well as to the reading, um, of these books, which uh, you can follow if you so wish. Well, I spoke to Andrew Norris, who's a great fan of the show and an artist in his own right, and he said he was interested in making the puppets so that we could do a reenactment of that show, um, of his puppet show. We could go to one or two of the places that he went to about a hundred years ago and recreate the Walter Wilkington, uh, Wilkinson peep show experience. And I'm very excited because in here are the puppets. So they're just the puppet heads, I think. We've got to yet make uh, the costumes. Uh, I'm looking for a seamstress who can help me with that. But I think Julia's mum has uh, shown an interest in that. Uh, at least that's what Julia said. So very excited. Shall we have a look inside at the puppets? And also, when we, while we do that as well, I've got some footage that Andrew has put together uh, showing how he made the puppets. So, but let's have a little look inside, first of all, at what we've got. I gave myself the task of making two puppet heads for Richard. 
and I've collected all the necessary material. I've got um, research material. These are the heads that I'm going to make. Vaseline, balloons, a sharp knife, newspaper, water, wood glue, and some of my most brilliant ideas come in my sleep. And I came up with the idea of cutting this top off a plastic bottle to make the collar for the template for the head to stand on. The finger will go up inside and the clothing will rest on the collar of the bottle. So I will get on with it and show you what I do. <laughs> Here we go. Hello folks, this is day two of my puppet making enterprise and so far I've come up with this. The glue has dried, um, the balloon I've managed to extract from the inside and I tried building up the cheeks and the eyebrows but I'm not very happy with it so I went out and I got some plaster of Paris and sandpaper so I'll try and shape the cheeks a bit, soften the nose, put some more pronounced eyebrows. Let that dry and then I'll paint it and see how it looks after that. Here we have the model. And the plaster actually went on very well. So I'll wait till it dries and then sand it down and uh, then I'll paint it. It's the end of day two and I've come up with this. I'm not very happy with the painting of the face. I'm not very good at faces, but I will have another go next week, see if I can improve upon it. And then I will get a piece of cloth, like so, and that'll be her. Hello. Well, I have to say, I'm very indebted to Andrew for collaborating on this project. It's going to be absolutely magnificent. We're going to do this in the spring. Uh, that's the time that he did it in the late 20s, in the springtime. So I think that's appropriate that we do that. The weather, of course, at the moment is cold and miserable. And ideally, it would be lovely to try and gather a bit of an audience and put on a bit of a show while we demonstrate what Walter would have done and his way of life as well. So watch out for those in the new year sometime, I don't know, April, May time. Um, I think it was in May that he was doing. He describes in the book the, uh, all the blossom from uh, the hawthorn bushes and, and all of that. So presumably that's it. But that's it for now. now. No doubt I'll be back on the Sussex border walk very soon. So watch out for those. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to follow, like and subscribe. Become a patron, support what I do. Uh, a small donation really does help put petrol in the van and get me to complete my videos. And I'll bring them straight to you. Till next time, thanks for watching. Bye bye.